Aquarius Singles, welcome. It's a mid-November. Singles read, meet the soulmate. This reading is always positive because it asks the simple question of who is the right one for Aquarius. Um, I like to think of it as there's a quiver of soulmates, I think they're everywhere. <laughs> I don't really think narcissists are everywhere. I think that's a little overblown. There's a lot of assholes out there. <laughs> um, um, but I think soulmates are everywhere. All the people we're close to and have relationships with. And certainly children and lovers and family. And real good friends. Probably anyone. It's all orchestrated probably, right? But here I just want to uh, talk about your person. So describe them. I say it's a positive read. It's not really triggery. If you see a three of swords, it's something about them. It's it's not, no one's breaking up with you. So that's what's a good thing about this reading. Using the Ethereal Visions Illuminated Tarot deck, by the way. So thanks for joining me here at the Cancun Urban Studio in the evening, just around sunset here, Mexico. It's been a great day, really. We just had some parrots blow through, but uh, they're kind of cool, but they're pretty rowdy. <laughs> It's like spring break when the parents come. They call them a gang. So, uh, let's start. We're looking at the emotional nature. I pre-shuffled for a while before I started this out here. Two of Cups. This is in the emotional position. And I read two cards. And um, this is kind of consciousness and unconsciousness. Three of Wands. It's kind of how I kind of feel my way through it. This is the emotional aspect of the four pillars. Then there's the intellectual, sexual love, and the core values and lifestyle, the four pillars. So really try to get with eight cards to really get a good look at your person. And we'll get some astrology and see about their personality and behavior, their personal history, maybe find some stories they might tell. So let me look at their intellectual cards here. Let me start. Um, the Nine of Swords. And the Fool card. This is in the intellectual position. It's a complicated person. You know, I've seen this before. I think I've done, I don't know how many singles reading, but I'm up too many. I read up, uh, over 700 and uh, only 880 subscribers, so. You do help me. Uh, I don't want my number of readings to exceed the number of uh, subscribers. That would be bad. But uh, I've only said this a few times, and I don't. I don't imagine it's all that uncommon. But somehow this person, the big thing about their childhood, energetically, and a story they might tell. There might be a Leo, like a fire couple involved, uh, born out of probably passion and your person. Um, and they broke up somewhere six, seven years old, old enough, just old enough to kind of understand. And they were asked to make a choice and they had to actually do something. Like they had to choose, like to live, probably to live with mom or live with dad and move. And they I may not, have, maybe they weren't even in the same city, something like that. And I don't think this is uh, anything that ruined your person for life or anything like this. Remember, it's your person. They're not perfect. They're the one that's right for you. That's all we're asking, Spirit. Who's the one that's right? Best suited to for your soul purpose right now. So a soulmate. Um, but it uh, has an impact on them. So um, they don't like responsibility and they don't um, kind of really put up with it. It's, uh, um, they probably have a very creative mind, something like this. You have the fool here in the intellectual position. You know, in the unconscious, it's like the, the, uh, the uh, iceberg that's under the water, that's 90% of it, you know. Uh, the Titanic only uh, would have seen the 10%, I guess, had it seen it at all. But it's the 90% that sunk it. And so... They have an ability to detach and move on. Um, probably, and I think we're looking at a Pisces sun. And um, 
I think with the two of cups, I see a Libra moon. I know it's water, you know, cups and everything. I see a water moon. I see someone emotionally, uh, they're really uh, concerned about relationships, about the other, you notice. And then here, look at their karma. You know, it would all be in their chart, north node, south node, really everything, the ascendant, the Pluto aspects, and the moon. And here I think we have a Libra moon. And we have a Pisces, so cardinal moon and a mutable water person. Um, so I think also you have an empath. So this is the, they have a way of, they've learned to deal with it. You know, a lot of empaths don't really maybe our whole lives or maybe you do finally, but few learn in childhood and um, it's a bit hit or miss, but I think somewhere it's in, probably in their chart. They're predisposed um, to sort of shedding the um, energetic uh, burden of other people, particularly hard or negative energy. Uh, that they might just pick up uh, being this empath. You may find that they uh, talk about, or you could ask them, they actually do cleansing rituals are important to them. Maybe a lot of people do, but to them maybe it's something important, like maybe it's a daily thing. You can make a small ritual out of entering and leaving a room if you want, you know, and uh, it symbolizes a lot, leaving one room, moving into another. It's like crossing over or crossing between the veil. The psychology of it so they may be aware of that so um, it's just I've never had this before guys this is like you know who's Amy from the dead files and by the way I was gonna tell you I get nothing out of this I'm just, just I love the dead files and and uh, I don't really watch it because I don't have cable but I'd like to you know it's the only show I really care about but someone like Amy, you know, uh, um, who is a medium and talks to dead people. So now I tell you what we could. I mean, I part of this reading is just so you can identify it when you meet them, you get to talk to them, get to know them. You know, we tell each other our stories, and we're looking at someone already. It has a pretty distinct personality. Um, they're probably going to really be charming and really be. Uh, really connect with you and make you feel heard make you feel understood they probably really will understand you there's someone that's you know very emotional too this uh it's funny you know i pick up the water energy off of the swords <laughs> but i pick up the lever off of the water um and i just feel like because of this it's like uh you know the eighth house here uh also with scorpio um uh, in Neptune, where you have no boundaries, and it's just pure water. Uh, they could have something going on in both. They could have a Pisces in the, in their eighth son in the eighth house, eighth house son, something like that. And in the eighth house is where things enter and leave. You know, it's like uh, the porous part of a cell. So that's what I think of the eighth house. It's um, uh, where energy comes and goes read a lot of psychics or astrology when I was learning my astrology 50 in a row all psychics what known psychics and uh, working with them for hours and really sometimes for days working on their charts uh, began to see where you see the energy of it um, and uh, the eighth house is the most prominent house for sure and um, it's nice that they have the fool here because they have a way of dealing with this. They've learned probably or are spontaneously created, you know. This could be someone, ask them this, uh, hey, did you um, start doing Reiki movements and work before you even knew what it was and then later saw it and figured out like, oh, that's that uh, energy work I've been doing on my own. That's a weird story, but I bet they're going to cop to that one. Okay, Aquarius, get to the good part. This is the love and sexual nature. Ace of Cups. It's a nice card to have there. And the Ten of Cups. Let's just stop right there. Woo, woo. Four values and lifestyle. Uh, time out.
uh, we gotta look at this holy shit guys you can see that you know um, in the sexual and love nature you have the ace of cups and the ten of cups and I think we're getting a glimpse into who this person is I go so far as to say this definitely they're gonna have a Venus and a Mars and Pisces and I think it's all going to be conjunct with the Sun at least within that 10 degree orb um, so they have their Sun and their Venus energy their desire and their Mars energy their will um, and the way they take action ability to take action they're already in some kind of alignment because they're in a conjunction there um, working together um, in Pisces um, so this is why they're such a sensitive person and empath and um, so probably you know they they might have been a kid that was telling their parents when they were very little try to think of where they learned it's coming to me it's like um, they were uh, telling them and telling them that they're talking to little friends and so finally someone comes along probably an aunt and takes them aside as a little child and says I want to just like you and I talk about this and kind of tells them about what it means to be an open you know a hollow bone and uh, be a voice and uh, to be open energetically to the to the veil to the other side and um, um, so that could be a story too if you get into them they really get to talking um, as to how they began to learn um, to control this energy this nine of swords energy um, you know, um, so this could literally be someone who sees dead people, just to be clear, I'm a little bit making fun of that movie, but what an awesome movie that was, damn, when you first saw it, you didn't really know, I didn't know, until, yeah, they got me, I don't really count the bottom, much like the magician, so let's see, in the core values and lifestyle, temperance, sag energy, what's going on there? Page of Wands, so some fire. So, um, they may have a tenth house that's Sagittarius. Uh, so, uh, twelfth would be uh, Aquarius. So, they could be a Pisces rising. We might have that too. So, add Pisces rising. Sagittarius in the 10th house um, and probably uh, whatever they do involves also uh, with the page of wands under temperance um, some kind of physical uh, thing that they do uh, so a medium just receives you know but they're also uh, capable of projecting energy so I mean they could remote heal as well you know um, something like this and that might be kind of what they're most known for even um, with the temperance here you know that's the Sag card it's a it may I think this person how you will experience them they're very like a Sag I'm Sag they're very easy going basically they're like whatever you know you're not gonna say oh they're dramatic no or uh, no um, but when they open it up and talk about themselves it's gonna be a lot of feelings right and it, I mean, sexually and romantically, uh, you know, uh, Venus is exalted in Pisces. Now, not exactly exalted in Mars, um, uh, but Pisces Mars is capable of uh, working with emotional magic, you know, putting a lot of emotion into what's done and what action's taken, which can make it very strong even. Uh, I, even though you know maybe wouldn't associate strength with Pisces but you know when you find your center and you know you're emotional and this person maybe they tap in well what are you using for healing you're gonna bring Mars into it and what do they got in line for that well they got the ten of cups so they got a Mars is probably pretty well aspected too and maybe has some kind of power in their chart here so I don't know. That's what I get for your person, guys. So let me know what you think. Do give me a like, thumbs up, tell friend, tell friend. And uh, do subscribe. I would appreciate it.